Antonio Johnson has kind of a long story. You know, he started out as a high school player who wasn't getting recruited much, but all of a sudden hit a growth spurt. Kind of has that same story as Anthony Davis, who was a point guard his freshman year in high school and then all of a sudden turned into a 6'11 beast going into college. But Antonio Johnson is different because he doesn't just specialize in scoring. He also takes pride in his defense, leading the team in steals by a long shot and on his way to being all defensive first or second team in the conference. With Johnson being our leader for the next four years, we're in good hands. The UCF Knights are good with Antonio. Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jake from TNJ, and welcome to the UCF Knights Dynasty. Today, we conclude the regular season here in season number one before hopping into conference tournament play. It's always the most exciting time of the year for sure, especially in this game. I think the conference tournaments are excellent in this game. The intensity is always turned up. So we conclude the season here and we will play VMI here in the next few games. We have six games remaining. And this is the third to last game here at the end of the schedule. And we will see if we can close out this season strong and possibly scoop up that number two seed in that conference tournament. UCF is up by two here in the second half, 43 to 41. We'll see if we can close it out. Here's a drive by VMI off of the bottom of the rim, rebounded by UCF. Here we go the other way. Darkoon is up to Jack McAbee for the dunk. And that one will be giving us a four-point lead. And here's VMI back on offense, step back. Here's a drive to the lane, spinning layup, and a foul in the end one. Antonio gets called for that foul, and here we go. We're just up by one now, as here's a defensive rebound by McAbee. He's pushing it all the way up the court. Here's a pass to the corner. Henry, J. Henry will pass it back to the three-point line. Pass inside to Darkunas, who gets it to go. Domas Marcunas is such a good rebounder. He's going to lead the conference in rebounding this year for sure as a senior. We will miss him next season. Is now here on a three-point game, pushing it up in transition. Look at the step back. Tough shot by Antonio Johnson. Probably made that harder than it needed to be. But here is VMI on offense, driving the lane, and that one will be a foul on Marcunas, and it will be a three-point game now. At the end of the shot clock, here is a Euro step, and they get called for the foul, UCF does. And Jonah Kenny, who is their leading scorer on the season, gets the and one. And now it is a tie ball game at 49 apiece. Here we are pushing it up the court now. Johnson looking for an open man. Marshall Allison inside, and that is Mwangi, who puts up another wild shot. Made that way harder than need to be. It should have been just an easy dunk or even a layup. Here, 49-49, pass inside, and that is a foul on Marshall Allison, who did get the start about halfway through the season, and we've kind of stuck with him. He's given us points here in sim situations and actually been pretty decent on the court. Here's a pick and roll here for Antonio Johnson. He just goes to an open spot and pulls up. We're only shooting 38% from the floor today, but we are playing good defense. There is Johnson using the sideline as a defender this time, throwing up a shot. This one's off, but an offensive board by Marshall Allison is going to be an and one. And we convert right there, and now we have the three-point lead here with about 10 minutes to go here in the second half and Marshall Allison converts the and one. And now here we go back on defense. Here's a wild shot put up by VMI, but they do get the foul call on Nash Kolchek, who is our backup center. He's playing decently, obviously not a dominant guy. We don't have many dominant guys, but we play good team basketball as we do get this trimmed down to a two point lead here. 57-55, Johnson handling the ball. He's gonna be our go-to scorer probably throughout this his four years, but here is a block that time inside. Marcunas puts it up, but offensive rebound. Mwangi gets it to go. 
he has shown that he can score on the inside for sure. We will start to have to utilize that. Here's Johnson passing to the right side. This is Mwangi in traffic. He misses the shot but gets his own board and puts it up and in. It's now a six-point game. 61 to 55. Here's a long pass inside, and that's deflected by Mwangi. Antonio Johnson, so good in transition, he throws it down. Earlier in this season, I thought that Antonio Johnson was pretty much just a shooter, but he has shown that he has improved in all areas. Here he is in transition, though. Open three, but he decides to step in the three-point line, takes a better shot. It's an 8-0 run here for UCF. Antonio Johnson has scored our last six points. Here's a defensive rebound by Jordan White off the bench. Here's Johnson in transition. He gets the foul, and he will go to the line up to a 10-point lead at this point. He's averaging 19.8 points per game as he hits the first, and the second one will also be good. He gets a breather right now as Maccabee comes in, and now with a comfortable 12-point lead. Here we are on defense. Here's a deep logo three, way off. Marshall Allison on the defensive board, pushing it up the court. Here is Maccabee setting up the offense, waiting for his guys to get down court. Running a play here. It looks like this play will be run for Johnson. In the corner, this is a three, and he knocks it down. Johnson is on fire today. And look at this. VMI turns it over right away with the pass out of bounds. It looks like UCF should be in control here with five minutes to go. Johnson, nice move. And nobody can hold him now. He is on fire. We just keep going back to him, setting the double team on defense. Here's a steal by Johnson in transition. He's going to go all the way with the left-handed layup. It's now a 10-point lead with about a minute and a half to go. Now they start to foul here with 30 seconds left. Down by nine. Here's Maccabee at the free throw line. He does hit the first of two. Back to a 10-point lead here, and the second one is also good. And VMI cannot come back in this one. We hold the lead and do get the victory here with three more games remaining. We're trying to get this number two seed, and we're looking good in this one. This has been kind of the monkey on our back, closing out games in close games like this towards the second, towards the end of the second half and kind of pulling away. We do a good job there going to, to Antonio Johnson quite a bit in this one. He had 36 in this game. Marcunas had 18 rebounds and Marshall Allison had 12 rebounds. Good games from our big men. And defensively, I think that was the difference. We had a lot of transition opportunities, deflected passes, steals on the double teams. And that's something that we have to do well if we want to do well in our conference tournament for sure. I'm excited for the conference tournament, mostly to potentially play Winthrop. I'm excited for that matchup because I think we could have beat them. But we kind of end the season here, and I want to just take a quick break in the action to talk about submitting your prospect, your recruit. So down in the comments section below, there is a template to submit your recruit. Go ahead and get that in. I cannot promise that you will be on the UCF roster, but I will make up everybody I can on the conference team. So what I did with my LBSU series, if you guys haven't followed, I made sure I had everybody included that I could on the rest of the Big South Conference on the other conference teams so that's how I will do it here in this series so here we go 54 to 51 versus Radford let's see if we can close out this one with about two minutes to go there is a drive and that is a foul and Antonio Johnson goes to the free throw line he hits the first of two up to a four point lead and the second free throw is also good a minute 45 to go here with a five-point lead. Can we close out another close matchup? Here is a pass, and it's deflected. Mwangi with the defense going up for the layup. Maccabee is fouled. Actually, that's blocked, and Mwangi is fouled. And how about Mwangi? How is he playing so well? After not starting for a while, now he's trying to get his starting job back. It looks like he hits the first of two, but his defense has been excellent so far. We might have to insert Mwangi in the conference tournament because he is getting boards, he is scoring, and he's also throwing good passes for the outlets, and it's good for three. Antonio Johnson 
stretches it to nine, and eventually we end up running this clock out. They try to foul here with one second to go, but a 62-57 game. Johnson goes to the free throw line. He's going to kind of miss that one on purpose to end the game, and it will be a five-point victory. Two close victories here for UCF. We're starting to figure out how to close these games. And I think having Mwangi in there late in the game is definitely helping us. He had a couple of nice steals, a couple of nice rebounds at the end of that one. And now we get towards the end of the season. We end up beating Charleston Southern 81 to 65 as we now get to the last game of the season. And now we play Gardner Webb, the running Bulldogs. They are 13 and 15 overall, 9 and 6. It looks like since we uh, have a 10 and 5 record in conference, regardless of the outcome of this game, we're probably going to be the number two or number three seed, uh, depending on if we win or lose. And I don't think we're going to be dropping down to number four, just based on Gardner Webb being number four. They're 9 and 6 in conference, but their overall record is 13 and 15. Not necessarily sure how it goes in college basketball with the uh, uh, conference tournament seedings, but I'm pretty sure like overall record has something to do with it also. So here we go. Marcunas will be at the tip. We'll see if we can close out this season with a big dub. Here we go. Maccabee pushing it up the court. Marshall Allison does get the start here. And there is a three. Antonio Johnson knocks it down. I just talked about Mwangi needing, wanting to get a start, but we already know what he can do as a starting forward. So I'm probably going to save that for the conference tournament and give other teams a different look. But here is a drive in transition. This one will be a foul on Domas Marcunas. Leading the conference in rebounding, 15 rebounds a game. Does get called for the foul that time. Vic Kennard to the free throw line for Gardner-Webb. He knocks down the first and I'm not even sure where the Big South Conference Tournament games are played. I'm pretty sure it's not at a neutral site. It's at the uh, court of the home team. So here we go. 3-2 to two game now. Mwangi checks in early. Passing it over to Henry. Henry inside. And that is Johnson turning into kind of a all-around score, not just a shooter. As here he gets a deflection off of Jack McAbee. He drives, passes out to McAbee, and McAbee gets the foul. It's an and one, right-handed layup. He gets it to go. Good pass by Johnson. And McAbee draws the contact. He goes to the free throw line. 5.8 points, 6.8 per game. As far as assists go, he can't knock down the free throw. And now it is a 7-6 to six game. Here we go, working it around the perimeter, trying to set up a little bit of the motion offense. They're playing a little... 3-2 zone it looks like here's a pass inside and that one is good and that one will be Cody Stanley off of the bench we do occasionally switch to a zone on defense but here is Gardner Webb with a corner three and that one is knocked down they have more of an up tempo style so they're going to try to get up shots quickly you send the double team here in the corner trying to trap but a long pass and they get it inside missed shot and their own offensive rebound and a dunk I was hoping for that pass, actually. I thought it was going to be deflected. So here's a pass inside, outside the lane, and that was a bad pass, to be honest with you. Antonio Johnson on the de defensive board, pushing it up the court. Pass inside to Nash. Cole check. Good pass by Antonio Johnson. Drew the defenders in, and then a wide-open man under the basket. Here's a drive, though. Gardner-Webb, and that one will be a layup there. Could have been a foul, actually. 16 to 14, good defense here by UCF. It's Henry going the other way. Henry with two hands for safety. And it's now a 16 to 16 game. Here Gardner-Webb goes to the free throw line in a tie ball game. Knocks down the first, that one will be good. And now the second one will give them the two point lead here. And these are the kind of teams that we're probably going to play in the opening rounds. Teams like this, Gardner-Webb, we probably won't play Winthrop. They're the number one seed. We will either face them maybe in the semis, depending on our seed, or in the finals. But here is Jordan White off the bench. He will drive to the lane, 22-20 at that point. And it looks like this one's going to be a close game all the way. Here is Johnson in transition. Defensive board, and he flies to the hoop. I don't know what the defender was doing on that one, but he just let Antonio go all the way in. And now it is a tie ball game, just going back and forth. Both teams going at it here in the first half. 
Good defense being played by both squads. Here, a long three. Offensive board by Gardner-Webb. It will be put up. And now it is a two-point game. Looking for the last shot here. Antonio looking for the pick and roll. But a bad pass inside. It's deflected. Here goes Gardner-Webb the other way. Five seconds to go. They have a man at the three-point line just sitting there. He's not going to take this shot, but he eventually does. And that one will be off. They probably wasted a possession right there. Could have had a better shot. Instead, it's a 28 to 26 game going into halftime. We'll see if we can close out this season strong. So here we go in the second half now. We already know what Antonio Johnson is doing down the stretch, but here is McAbee taking a three, and that one is good. If he can start to hit that three, we will be in good shape going into the conference tournament. We will definitely need that scoring from him. Now in a 33-32 game, a good pass. That was an excellent play run by Gardner-Webb. And they eventually go up by three here with about 10 minutes to go. Here is Nash Kolchak. What is he doing on the three-point line? Here's a pass inside to Johnson, though. And he gets the little baby hook on that one, 38-37, down by one. Jordan White now handling the basketball. Pass to the corner. Kolchak, he's out there again. But a nice open pass to Antonio Johnson, 40-38. We already know who our best scorer is. We've got to find ways to get him the ball in different areas of the court. But Gardner-Webb is just answering right back. It's now a 40-all game. Here is a wild shot at the free throw line area. This one's off back rim. Here we go in transition. Here is Johnson with the right-handed layup, and it's good. In traffic, and you can just see what we are trying to do here. Get these, crash these defensive boards and run in transition. Get some easy buckets here, 42-40, and that is good. Gardner-Webb ties it up, shot just outside the lane, and now it is a tie ball game with about seven minutes to go. Johnson breaking the double team with the floater. This is why Antonio Johnson is just special. They send the double team. He breaks through it. He hits a defender in the lane. Look at this from the top here. I mean, just absolutely drawing the defense in, hitting these tough shots is exactly what Antonio Johnson does. He's our MVP in the regular season for sure, not just because of his scoring, but he's also an A-plus defender as well. 46 to 45 now. Gardner Webb is up by one. Here is Darian Edwards. He checks into the game. Passing over to Mwangi. Mwangi! Oh! Almost an and one on that one. Down by one now. Mwangi ties this ball game up. He has turned into maybe a little bit of a score. Now remember, Mwangi is a freshman also. Maybe that's a part of his game that can develop. And now it is 47 to 46. Marcunas. Here's a jump shot. Missed. Offensive board. Put back up and in. Maccabee showing off the ability to rebound. And we get our lead up to a three point game. Here is a three missed by Johnson. But an offensive board missed. Marcunas. Offensive board missed. Kolchak misses. Four missed shots on that possession. Three offensive boards, and we could not get it to go. Gardner Webb the other way. And guess what? They answer. Three minutes to go now. Gardner Webb with possession down by one. Here's a drive to the basket and Mwangi a little bit too aggressive on that block. Gardner Webb does take the two point lead, or one point lead actually, 52 to 51. Two minutes to go. Jump shot from the wing and it's good. 54 to 51. Is now he had to work for a good shot here. But Johnson gets the ball ripped away at the top. Here comes Gardner Webb the other way in transition, working it to the wing. A tough layup, and they get the foul call with about a minute and a half to go. Tyson Chapman goes to the free throw line. It, that one is off right rim. The second one is good. It's a four point lead here with about a minute and a half to go. Need a good shot here. We don't need to take a three, but if it's there, we could take it. McAbee all the way to the basket. Nobody stops him. And it's now down to a two-point lead here for Gardner-Webb. We need a good defensive possession right here. Here's a drive and a shot off. Marcunas with the rebound. Here we go the other way. Here is Antonio Johnson, but it looks like he did not know where he was on the court. He steps back court and gives the ball right back to Gardner-Webb. And they have a quick trigger for three. It's a five-point game just like that. And Gardner-Webb looks like they may hold on here. A pass inside. 
and that's good. That just little possession right there where Antonio Johnson just lost his footing on the court, steps back court. We end up losing the season finale here, 60 to 53. And it's not a huge deal, but one that you do want to get back there the last two minutes. You have to work on those situations because we have not been good in that area this entire season. But you saw some good things in this episode with closing out games. Mwangi is definitely a guy that we need to use more. It, it just looks like, you know, I'm just looking at the future here. Mwangi's going to develop that offensive game. One thing I love about NCAA Basketball 10 is that you can develop guys throughout the years. And in my previous series, we saw guys like, I don't know if the OGs are seeing this video right now, but Tamir Macklin is a great example. He was just a catch and shoot guy when we started as a freshman. And when he started as a freshman, it all of a sudden turned into our best scorer of all time, pretty much. I'm hoping that that kind of happens with Mwangi. I'm hoping that he is kind of like a defensive guy right now and develops into a scorer. That would be awesome. So the season does conclude. We end the season 19 and 10. Not a terrible season. Obviously not a great season, but it's a good season. Antonio Johnson averaged 20 points, and Larry O'Neal still averaged 10.6. I barely scored with him on the court. I'm going to have to see how I can score with him in the future, and maybe he's a guy that develops you know, his game a little bit. Jay Henry was a guy that I tried to put in the start lineup, but I actually like him coming off of the bench. I just like the energy that he brings. And I like Marshall Allison also in the start lineup, but I think Mwangi will start, especially in the conference tournament. I think he just gives that energy, that defensive energy. He will uh, spark some fast break opportunities, especially with his uh, active hands on defense. So I definitely want to get him some more uh, playing time. Devon Bands had a good season, too. I actually liked him a lot, especially on defense. Cody Stanley had some good uh, um, offensive possessions throughout the season. I thought that he was an aggressive player. Jordan White, I wish that he could shoot the basketball. He's so good at getting to the basket. But the thing is, like, he can't shoot. So it's definitely a liability for us there. And then looking at our rebounding, you know, we did do well there in that department. Marcunas was amazing. We're definitely going to miss him next year. Who's going to be the starting center? I'm not sure. It's probably going to be Mwangi starting at the five. But we'll have to see. Antonio Johnson actually makes second team all Big South, averaging 20.6 points per game. I was surprised that he did not make first team. But I guess the committee decided otherwise. He did not make all defensive first team either. I was surprised by that. But Mwangi makes all defensive second team. I mean, I'm not really truly surprised by that. But, uh, but how did Johnson not make first or second team all defense? I'm shocked by that. He did make all freshman first team. Obviously averaged like 10 more points than any other freshman. And then three of our guys, Larry O'Neal, Devon Bands, and Mwangi, all made second team all freshmen. But I, I was hoping that Antonio Johnson would be all first team defense. But we end up going into the conference tournament, the Big South Conference Tournament with the three seed. We will be taking on Charleston Southern. And it looks like the only way we will face Winthrop is in the championship. So they get that number one seed. We are the number three seed. We will be taking on Charleston Southern. We beat them the second to last game. They're on a three-game losing streak. They ended up 16-13 and 13 overall. So we will just have to put our best foot forward and play, no matter who's in front of us, our best game. So we'll see what happens next episode. The conference turning begins. Get your submission for your recruit in. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Hope you guys are excited for the conference tourney. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.